So, session outline. Today, by the end of the session, you shall understand and be able to calculate current and voltage in series circuits, current and voltage in parallel circuits, we can do the two separately, and then we'll culminate right at the end, mixing it all up and doing current and voltage in combination circuits. Okay, so that's the plan. Now the details. So that top one is a symbol, or one of the symbols that can be used for a DC voltage source. Like a battery generator, it's a general symbol for a source that is DC. So you've got the circle, the one and a bar line of prep and a dashed line underneath. DC stands for direct current, that means that the current travels in one direction only and doesn't change direction. The current from this we travel in the direction of that arrow. That's plus and minus. Higher voltage, lower voltage. So the arrow point, so that the head points to the positive terminal of that source. Okay? Please try not to use voltage arrows on your diagrams that have head and both ends. We want to know which end is the most positive. It's important. Okay? And when we've got a source, the current flows in the same direction from the positive terminal round the circuit to the negative terminal. That's the being precise what's called conventional current. Yep. And I say that because I'm going to say this once and then we'll forget about it for almost ever. The actual electrons move in the opposite direction. They go from this terminal to that one. Alright? I always teach conventional current. And the only time you have to be aware of electrons going the other way is kind of the electronic theory in transistors and diodes and things. But we'll worry about that when we get to it in semester two. Okay? So for everything we're going to do in science here, current flows from the positive terminal to the negative one. Yeah. If we then take a component in the circuit, let's just take the simplest component that we can have, which is a simple resistor, R1. If current is flowing into that resistor that way, there is a volt drop across it where that end is positive and that end is negative. The current and the voltage arrows on that component are in opposite directions. Yep. Okay. So when we meet every component in the circuit, there'll be a volt. If there's a current flowing through it, and there's a resistance to that, which there always will be for a resistor, we'll get a volt drop across it. This terminal will be at a higher voltage than that one. Yep. You'll also, I'll, you'll hear me call it volt drop, you'll hear me call it potential difference. They both mean the same thing, and they're both measured in volts. Okay? But the arrow here for this voltage goes against the direction of current. Yep. And like that, they did this morning. I read it twice for some reason. Probably copied and pasted or something. Okay. Put a new what in that does. Um, I'm not an expert on motor vehicle electrics, and it is a completely different field to the one I've ever been in. So what you're saying is, a meter across the bulb, which is one that isn't working, 
yeah, and you you measure 12 volts, yeah, but the lamp doesn't light. You put new cables in. Yeah, well, what's happening there is is your your the rest of the volt drop, the rest of the 12 volts is getting dropped somewhere else because. When we draw a circuit on the board, all them wires we draw, them lines, we assume have no resistance. But real wires and connections, especially if they're loose, have resistance. So therefore, in a real circuit, you're never gonna you're never gonna measure what you calculate in theory, unless you take those cable um, resistances in practice. But if they're very short, you don't, you just ignore them. If you're talking about going three miles with a cable, then if you don't take its resistance into, into effect, you won't have any voltage left when you get to the other end. Yeah, that's why, well, that's one of the reasons why the, the wide scale transmission of electricity is at 400,000 or 132,000 volts because volt drop issues and power loss as well. And, current levels but one of the issues is volt drop all right yeah so if we connect more than one resistor in a circuit and we connect them in series okay we create what's called a voltage divider what happens is Circuit, there's only one current. The one current, the rest of the world, every piece of current that leaves this terminal has to end up going back in that terminal. There's no leaks, we don't lose any electrons anywhere. They all leave, they leave that terminal, they end up at that terminal. All those positive charges leave that terminal and end up at that terminal. Yeah. So, each resistor in a series circuit has the same current flowing through it. Yep. But the voltages across the components can be different. Yep. So if we look at this circuit, we can say the current is equal to the voltage E, supply voltage, divided by the total resistance. The total resistance is R1 plus R2. So we can say the current, therefore, is equal to the voltage divided by R1 plus R2. And if there was an R3 and an R4 and an R5, all in series, we just add them on that bottom line. Yep, everybody happy with that? And then, if we, if we can calculate the current using the, this, this formula here, we can find what the volt drop V1 is by multiplying that current. All of that current's gone through that resistor. So we've got I and we've got R1. We can find V1 by multiplying the current times the single resistor. And then we can find V2 by multiplying the current by R2. We're isolating that bit, uses that formula, and that bit on its own uses that formula. This is dealing with the whole circuit. E is the, use E for source, a source of voltage. That's that. It's that E there. That's the supply voltage from the source. So this might be a battery or a DC generator, some kind of DC source of electricity. All right? Unfortunately, Fred, in textbooks and other papers, you'll find people put VT for that, VS, yeah? So, the Germans use U for voltages, for some unknown reason. U1, U2, U3, 
So you, you have to get used to those different things that you'll find in various textbooks and things. So I do mix it up a bit. But generally, E is for source of EMF, electromagnetic force, which is a moment. Okay? Something that's going to pull the power. Right. So, on the next page, we're done. Right, next page is an example with some numbers so we can have a go calculating these and see how it all works. So, we've got resistors of value, we'll call that R1, 20 ohms, 75 ohms, R2, and 120 ohms in series. And I've connected to a supply E is equal to 100 volts. I want us to calculate the current I and the volt drops V1 V2 and V3 across each resistor. This will be an arrow in that direction using current to flow that way. Remember we said the current for the source, the current arrow and the voltage arrow in the same direction. For each of the volt drops, the current arrow and the voltage arrow oppose each other. How can I go about trying to find the current? What, do I, what would I do best to do first? Right. These three resistors are in series, so we can calculate the total resistance. That's R3. That is 20 plus 75 minus 120. 315. Volts. Okay. So what we have to do with any problem like this is look at the information we've got. And how can we use that information to find out a new piece of information? Because now that we've got the total resistance, remember what that is? That's the value of one single resistor, RT, 215 ohms, that we could replace those three with, and the same total current will flow. So now we've got, we've effectively got a circuit like this. We've effectively got 100 volts with a single resistor of 215 ohms back to the supply. So we can use Ohm's law now to find that single current. There's only one current in a series circuit. So if we know the total resistance and the voltage, we can find the current. Remember, if we know the value of every resistor in a circuit, we can always calculate the total, even if it's combination. A bit of trickery, can't we? Last week. Okay, so the next bit of this calculation is that I is equal to D over RT, that is 100 over 215 equals whatever that is. 0.465 amperes. Yep. 
So let's take that up to the diagram. We can now rate this as 0.465 amps because we've found out what it is. Now that current is the same current travelling through each one of these resistors. Therefore, we can isolate each one and calculate the three volt drops. So we look at this one and say V1 is equal to that current times that resistance using Ohm's law. And the same for the previous one, the next one. That voltage is equal to that current times that resistance. And this voltage is equal to that current times that resistance. So we can go uh, V1 is equal to I times R1 that's 0.465 times 20 V2 that's I times R2, 0.465 times 75. What, that one? The current has got the current has gone through both resistors, but we lose um, I times that resistance across there. Yeah, that would leave us with the remainder of the 100 volts. We'll lose a bit more across there, and then, 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 and then the rest across there. But you, you think in this calculation, I should use 75 plus 20. If I did that, Christian, I would be calculating the voltage across the two resistors together. Name what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to calculate this one voltage. Yep, you'll see in a minute where it comes from. Okay? I'm talking about measuring with a meter just that voltage across that resistor. So it doesn't involve that for any long, does it? So what we're talking about is measuring there to there. That would then be the voltage added together, and we'd have the resistance of these two added together. Alright? So that's that, and then V3 is I times R3, 0.465, times a hundred. I can do that one. It's one twenty, is it? I can't do that one then. Equals. Yeah. And the answers to each of those three are nine point six. Nine point three volts. Your deliberate mistake, wasn't it, Kirsty? Your deliberate mistake, wasn't it? Yeah. 9.3 volts. Next one. Thirty-four point nine then we'll have. Yeah, same number of decimal places. And the last one. Fifty-five point eight. Right. Yeah. What are them three add up to? Yeah, what? More or less a hundred. Yeah. In fact that is exactly a hundred the way we round them. Yeah. So if we add all these three up it equals the supply voltage. And there's a law that says that that we're gonna study in more detail next week. Kirchhoff's voltage law. Yeah. What, what? Yeah. What you put? What you put on? Must be lost. 
as, as some formal words for it, but what it really says is, round any one single loop in the circuit, the individual voltages add up to the supply voltage. So that's another way, what, what we could have done with that last one, is then V3 is equal to that 100, take away V1 and V2. Because they always add up to each other. Yep. And it don't matter, even when you get down to AC voltages that aren't in phase with each other. They still all add up. If you do the maths right, they still add up to equal the supply voltage. Always. There is a law called Kirchhoff's voltage law. Alright, well, not worry too much about the formalities of it this week. Okay, but we'll be doing that next week, I think. I hope. Alright, so that's a little check for you. When you're calculating all the voltages around there, do they add up to the supply you're putting on? But that must be isolated to that one, that one loop, that one series circuit. And you can see that the smallest resistor gets the least voltage, that has the least volt drop, biggest resistor has the most volt drop. Yep. They all get the same current, it's important to remember that in a series circuit. Alright? Now, there's something in the specification that says I have to teach you about voltage divider rule. Okay? Now, this is a quick way that you can get those two voltages in a, in a two resistor voltage divider rule, you can do it in one calculation. If you do the longhand way, in an assignment question, like we've just done it, I don't care. Right? Either way will do. I'm going to go through this anyway. We've already said, if we've got this two resistor um, voltage divider, so two resistors in series, R1, R2, we've got two volt drops across, we've got supply voltage um, E. The total resistance of that circuit, you'll all agree, equation 1 is R1 plus R2. Yeah. We can calculate the current in that circuit by dividing the voltage supplied by those two resistors are added together, i.e. by the total voltage. Yeah. We can calculate V1 by multiplying the current I times R1. We just did that for all the three resistors in the other circuit we just did. Okay. If I then replace I in this formula with that, I get the voltage divider formula for V1. So in one go, I can calculate V1 by multiplying E by R1 and dividing it by the two resistors added together. Equally, I can find V2 by multiplying E by R2 and dividing it by the two resistors added together. It's because it divides up in a ratio of the resistor values. If you understand and like that formula, for two resistors that's quick. If you don't do the longer route of calculating the separate values and finding the two separate voltages. I really don't care what I'm interested in is can you get the answer? Alright? Yep. Good. Right. What we're going to look at now is so not go and do an example problem using that. Right. So a slightly different problem here now. We've got to find some slightly different information. A voltage divider to give an output voltage V2 so this voltage here, we want that to be equal to 18 volts. 
from an input voltage B equals 35 volts. Given that R2 is equal to 50 ohms, calculate the required resistance of R1. If you want to know what resistor to put in there so that it gives me 18 volts across R2. Given the information that you've got, what can we calculate first? Remember what we've got in our armory, we've got Owen's Law and we've got series and parallel resistance. Okay, so what we found is, if we call this V1, yeah, V1 is equal to E, because we know these two must add up to that, so that must be E minus V2. That is 45 equals... So we want to that to be 27 volts. How can I find the value How can I find the current? What do you call current? What do you call current? We can, what we can do is we can put this bit of the circuit, that one resistor, we've got the voltage and the resistance. Therefore, we can find the current. And because it's a series circuit, it's the same current through this resistor. So once we know the current, we can use the 27 volts and the current to find that resistance. So we're right. We need to do I I is equal to uh, 18 volts V2 divided by R2. That's 18 over 50. 3.6. 0.36. I'll follow that. Yep. And now, we know that that's 0.36 pounds. We need that to drop 27 volts. So we've got current, we've got volts, we can use ohms law and our run. V over R. That is 27 over 0.36 equals. Seventy something, yeah. Seventy five ohms. Okay. So we supply this circuit with forty five volts. If we put a seventy five ohm resistor in there, we we'll get twenty seven across it, leave an eighteen there. Okay? quite a common thing to, to break voltages up using voltage dividers in some circuits. Okay. 
So we're going to fold it in place for three circuits. Everybody got what they want from that, yeah? So, what about parallel circuits? Parallel circuits are what's called a current divider. So if a circuit has got two resistors like that, they each have their own current flowing through them. So, total current flows, it reaches this point here, and it splits into I1 through R1, and I2 through R2. But it joins up again here, to be IT again, because everything that leaves there must always end up back there. No leaks. So in a, in a parallel circuit, the voltage across both resistors is the same, B e in this case, yeah. but the current through is different. So series has got same current, different voltage, parallel has got same voltage, different current. So I can calculate I1 from E divided by R1, and I can calculate I2 from E divided by R2. And also, another law says, if we're not going to lose anything, IT must be equal to I1 plus I2. Kirchhoff's current law. I can see you've got a, you've got a miss up stuff and you what bit when you when you look here this current splits into two currents yeah and here it comes back together into one current again that's why it this supply current must equal in a parallel circuit I1 in this case plus I2. Well, yeah, if, if the two resistors are the same value, you'll get the same current through both, but not if they're different. More current would go through the smallest one. Yeah, because they've got the same voltage across them. Yeah. In terms of voltage, all of that wire there is at the same potential. Electrically, if I want to do the voltage between there and there, I can put it anywhere on those wires. And that's exactly the same place, in theory, because these wires haven't got any resistance. Yeah, so each of those two resistors have got the voltage E across them. So the size. So the smallest resistor is going to get the biggest current, because current comes from E divided by R. Yeah. So Kirchhoff's current law says that these that these two currents must add up to what's going in. We don't lose anything. Yeah, and we can't gain any current. And then again here they join up to become IT again that side. And again, we'll be looking at current, current law in detail next week as well. Alright? <laughs> Any of you come across Kirchhoff's laws before? You've done lectures at you for enough detail to have done that? Yeah? Good. You'll know I'm right then. Well, we'll see. Alright? Again, that's another law, and it don't matter how complex the circuit is, it's always a bay. Yep. Right, so, incidentally, if we have three resistors, that splits into three currents, and the three currents will add up to the total, as you'll see in our example. I don't look at. So, three resistors. 66 ohms. R2, 33. R1, 
R3, 56, all connected in parallel. The supply voltage B equals 24 volts. Yeah. Calculate the total resistance. Well, RT is a question mark. Calculate the supply current. So that's this one in here. IT. Yeah. And calculate the current in each branch. That's another term you'll come across when you get parallel um, circuits. You talk about branches, and sometimes legs, each leg of a parallel circuit. So we've got branch I1, I2, and I3. So all them red things, that question's asking to calculate. So, how do I calculate the total resistance? Yeah. R1 to the minus 1, plus R2 to the minus 1, plus R3 to the minus 1. Then what we've got to do, little put them in, <laughs> raise the whole thing to minus 1, yeah? There's our formula. Now we can put the numbers in. 66 to the minus 1, plus 33 to the minus 1, plus 56 to the minus 1. All the minus 1. And we should be able to get an answer. Fifteen, exactly. Fifteen point eight. That's what we'll do with. Okay. What's my check that that's the right ballpark? What? It's smaller than than the smallest in the parallel network. Yeah. So. That's lower than 33, so that says that gives us a reasonable idea that's right. Okay. So RT 15.8 ohms. Now we know RT, how can we can we calculate the total current? Yeah, the total voltage, so that's supply of all three resistors, divided by the total resistance. 24, over 15.8. Point five one amperes. Yep. Now we've got um, the total current. 
So can we calculate the current I1, I2, and I3? I1 equals. How can we calculate that? Yep. We take E. They've all got E across them because they're in parallel. Over R1. 24. Over 66. Equals. I2. E over R2, 24, number 33, equals, not and I3, E over R3, 24, number 66, equals, And what are all them add up to? Yeah, more or less six, eight, seven, one point five. Yeah. Approximately they add up to if you carried all your results through that add up exactly to the total current because Kershaw's law says these three currents must add up to the total current. Yep. A little quizzy for you. What, current, what current's flowing here? If IT flowing there, uh, but I1 amount of current going down there. What's left? I2 plus I3. Down that little bit of wire there. And then the I2 goes down that one to leave I3 going down the end one. Voltage in parallel, if that's just parallel, like this is, no, no series involved. The supply voltage is across all of them. So it's the same. The voltage across these three in this circuit is E, 24 volts. That's why we were able, in this part, to use B, E, E. Because they're all the same. Yep. So whenever you see two or more resistors in parallel in a circuit, directly parallel, they must have the same voltage across them. Yeah? Whenever you see two or more resistors directly in series, they've got the same current flowing through them. Yeah? All right, with that, everyone? Yeah. Okay. What we're going to do now is have a look at pulling those two situations together. So here, got one source, T, 30 volts, R1, 10 ohms, R2, 30 ohms, R3, 50 ohms, and R4, 50 ohms. Yeah. We've got a current IT flowing there. We don't know that yet. And we've got two currents here, I2 and I3, through the resistors R2 and R3. We've got a mixture of series and parallel. Yeah. 
that says find all the known currents to unknown currents and volts. So I want you to find IT, I2 and I3, and V1, V2 and V4 volt drop to cross. Bear in mind these two are in parallel to that voltage V3 is equal to whatever V2 is. Yeah, because those two are in parallel. Everyone happy with that? Yeah. So, given that information, yeah, what can we now find? So take a look at that for a couple of minutes. I'm going to save the video up until now, so I don't have to wait here till nearly 7 o'clock. Take a look at that now and see, and see if you can see what order you can do some calculations in to find these three currents and then three voltages. <laughs>